Low Cut magazine apparently described them as free jazz rock meets hardcore post-punk, kraut rock on PCP or skronk no wave, but they call themselves Massacre Rock Deviant Inquisitors, which all of which seem like good uh, descriptions to me. They're called Gunslingers, and uh, that's been chosen by Julian Cope, who's uh, my guest here on this festive freak zone. That's, uh, that was terrific. French. French. <laughs> yeah. See, when they get it wrong, they're yeah. the crappest. When yeah. they get it right, like Metal Urbane yeah. and Gunslingers, they're totally opaque genius. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that is... Uh, that is. I I've mean, been meditating to the whole album. Meditating? Yeah, it's 35 minutes. What I love about them is they really understand their own metaphor. They're, all the songs sound the same. Yeah. He's trying to sing like Johnny Rotten on Bodies. Not like Johnny Rotten in any other place except on Bodies. Yeah. And um, they've got weird time signatures, and the whole album on repeat, you wake up four in the morning <laughs> with it on repeat. Like, oh, bloody hell, I've listened to this 17 times. <laughs> <laughs> it's so disorientating. It must be. It's incredible. I mean, that must really set you up for a very odd kind of day, listening to that Absolute, 17 times. Yeah, the sunrise is just... Yeah. Just about what you can handle. Yeah. Um, a good, good point there about just on bodies, because, of course, I don't know if you agree, uh, bodies the finest moments of the Sex Pistols. Completely. I, I always think, yeah. Yeah, completely, because it's pro... Uh, it's anti-abortion. Um, and that's fantastic because that means that it's true. It's truly confusing, even to a 19 year old like yeah. punk like me whose girlfriend had just had an abortion. Right. I'm like, hold on, Johnny even hates me? Yeah, yeah. And it is so. That's, that's bloody democracy for it's, you. Yes, and it is so kind of nihilistic, the song. Totally. Isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Her name yeah. was something, she lived in a tree. Her name was Pauline. She, she lived, lived in, a, in tree. a tree. Yeah, a great couplet. She was a girl from Birmingham, yeah. Um, so, um,. Well, that's true. How do you how do you find out about your music, Julian? How does it come to you? Do people send it to you? Do you go and search for it? Do you forage for it? You know, people send it to me. Do they? That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, I get a lot of stuff that is just so sociopathic that I'm so scared that they've even been able to get it to me. Right. But okay. I do get quite a lot of stuff that just says Julian Cope in Avebury. Yeah. And, and it that's uh, that's good. So you've got an accommodating postman, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, tell us a bit about your website, because, um, uh, well, it's, is it one website or is it a cluster of websites? It's a, um, it's a confederacy of websites. That's a nice way of putting it, yeah. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, nobody d necessarily agrees with the last person. It doesn't know what its right arm is doing. Um, and, uh... Most people disagree with my points of view, um, who write for it, and most, and I disagree with most of their points of view. Yeah. So it's um, it's the way it should be. Yeah, I mean, if if people don't know it, I should definitely say that under this under the kind of umbrella of Head Heritage, uh, headheritage.co.uk, and you can find, I mean. Uh, pretty much everything you recommend, either in your unsung section or whatever, is stuff mm. we would love to play on this show. I mean, it's great, it's great stuff. I mean, so it has become a kind of little community, hasn't it? Yeah, it's um. I wanted to know something obscure about Alice Cooper uh, about two days ago, yeah. and I uh, dialed it up, and it just went straight to Head Heritage. Right. I was like, what the hell? Yeah, that's cool. In right? evidence. Yeah, yeah. And and of course, that's a good way of keeping up with all the things that uh, you're up to. You had to, you had a bit of a problem with with your throat, didn't you? You had, did you have to did you have to cancel some gigs? I had to cancel some gigs because they had to thrust a small camera up my nose and down into my... Uh, oh, dear. Well, it was disgusting. Oh, was it? Um, yeah. yeah. And um, while I could write, I could sing most of the songs, there was a good third of the set I couldn't even approach because they were in that territory, mm. um, which I could see once the camera was up th my throat. Oh, God. What was yeah. that like? What was it? Grotesque. Was but I, I, I tried a few sounds. It was good to see the way that my, um, yeah. my esophagus... The, the shape it's making. Yeah. When you're making certain, you know, yeah. kind of crackly mouth sounds. Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, the, the, so if you want to keep up with what Julian's uh, up to generally, we'll talk more about that. Nobody minute. can keep up Nobody. with what Julian it's Cope futile. is up Yeah. Futile to even try. Exactly. I'm, I'm firing on all four. Let's have another tune. What have you got? I reckon maybe, um, how about Zounds? Okay. Um, Zounds were an anarchist band, hold on a sec, now typical, it's on Crass Records, so it doesn't say what side is what, that's yeah. the side. Um, apparently they just got back together to do some gigs with Damo Suzuki, 
But oh, um, really? they're such anarchists that um, two of them didn't turn up. Oh, really? Well, that's that's quite anarchistic in a way. It is, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. this is Can't Cheat Karma. This is one of my girl, my daughter's favourites. Great. One, two, three. That's Zones, Can't Cheat Karma, uh, is on uh, Crass Records, uh, I believe, originally, because they were, they, were, they were mates with Crass, weren't they, Julian? Yeah, absolutely, and um, they, weren't, they weren't up to much, but I just, that song, I just keep playing it and playing it forever. Yeah, yeah, they, they came out of that kind of cassette culture, post-punk, anarchists. Yeah, right, the, you know, yeah. yeah. All that kind of stuff, yeah. From yeah. Oxford. Yeah, yeah, Thames Valley kind of people, weren't they? And you say your daughter's keen on that? That particular one, yes. Right. Absolutely. What kind of music do your girls like? I mean, has, you, has your, uh, you know, taste in music rubbed off on them, or do they like the kind of music that the, the kids at school like and things? I'm not even going to comment on okay. what my kids listen to. Okay. Because I have to go home. Oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> I think you can read between the lines. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. I, yeah. I, t I take your point. Yeah, and uh, I mean, and are you constantly on the lookout for new stuff? I mean, I remember Peel Peel used to say that, like an old Roman emperor, he was continually looking for more and more thrills to excite his jaded palate. I mean, are you always looking for the next extreme or wonderful or terrifying or hilarious piece of music? You know? Yes. Well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of knew, I kind of thought you you would say that. Choose us something else, then. What have you got? Now we're going to listen to The Savage Rose from Denmark. Oh, okay. Yeah, 1968. Yeah. Um, extremely heathen. Mm. Um, Aniset was a big influence on Bajork. Yeah. Um, and she was very influenced by River Deep Mountain High period Tina Turner. Right. Um, and they succeed on this particular track to create a kind of five to one by the doors as appears in um, The Wicker Man. It's one of the scariest tracks I've ever heard. Wow. Well, Julian, uh, he wasn't wrong. Terrifying and kind of euphoric at the same time. It, it is, isn't it? It's one of the most heathen things I've ever heard. Because it's like... You, I've heard that song so many times, and every time I hear something new in the lyric, and it sounds like she's reporting on somebody who's about to be ritually raped by the village elders for kissing a landowner. Really? Which... I've, I might have got it totally wrong, but it's whatever it is. It's really a bit unsavoury. It's cer certainly, uh, yeah, odd, frightening kind of uh, tumultuous record. What, th these are these are from Denmark in the late '60s. What, what, what was that track called, Julian? A trial in your native town. A trial in your native town from Savage Rose, who were from Denmark, and as you say, featuring the extraordinary lead vocals of uh, Annie Set, who I gather um, uh, Lester Bangs was very keen on them, apparently. Yeah. And he, he, they he... were very briefly championed in America, but they found the whole thing in America so la di da and greed head orientated that they sod it off. And as Henry, your producer, pointed out, found themselves choosing to support James Brown um, and playing at PLO um, hideouts. Really? Blimey. Come on! Blimey, yeah. It's, um, it is extraordinary. Apparently, Lester Bangs described her as Grace Slick at 78 RPM. Yeah. Which I sort of know what he means, yeah. But that's, um, that was uh, remarkable. I'm sure we'll have to investigate more and play more of that on the Freak Zone. So we're Rock Savage... and roll, man, do it. Yeah, Savage Rose from Denmark there. Um, and she's a sex bomb. Yeah, I'm, well, she seems to be. Yeah, I've just been looking at some pictures. Yeah, so there you go. Yeah, great. Um, I mean, old records, new records, do you divide your time fairly equally between the, the two? Because one of the no. jobs... No. Um, I'd say 90% new. Right. 10% just going back and going, is that really as good as I remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, because one of the delights of this show, though, is quite often people will put, will t put me in touch with music. I, I just pass me by, or I wasn't around, or whatever, but it's always great to kind of rediscover stuff like that. Old tossers think it's all been done and dusted, though, don't they? They do, and it's not, does it, quite clearly? I can remember doing the Crap Rock book, and um, there was a, a, a guy going, he's got that bloody new, the crap, they'll never be good, yeah. just because it's old. And I was like, no, you're wrong. Yeah, yeah, you're wrong. People are still excavating, and they still will be. Yeah. What's coming up in 2009, then, for you? What are your plans? Um, Black Sheet double album. Yeah. I'm doing an action at the Whitworth Gallery at Manchester University. 
They're doing. Um, they've asked me to present a uh, history of protest and democracy. Right. Um, so I'm getting a load of lecturers on board talking about the English Civil War, mm -hmm. uh, the Peasants' Revolt, yes. um, what it is to be a practitioner of democracy, um, showing films of the Japanese actually practicing democracy um, in post-war. Mm -hmm. And um, I shall be parking extremely badly um, <laughs> to just show, um, yeah, at the gates of the museum yeah. to show... Um, you know that you have to you have to be practicing these things uh, in order to uh, to work out what good parking is. Okay. All these things we take for granted. You know. This is at the Whitworth in Manchester. Yeah. When's that going to happen? Um, I think it's uh, late Jan. Great. Yeah. We look forward. To it. I'll pop along. Cool, man. Come and hang out. Yeah. Sounds great. And uh, so, um, Black, Black Sheep is Black Sheep the main outlet for your musical uh, sort of uh, activities at the moment? Black Sheep is because Black Sheep's a movement. I'm having to establish the parameters of the movement. Right. So the guys who um, did that brilliant love documentary, they've yeah. just been doing uh, a documentary on Black Sheep and what it's about. So that's coming out soon, next, um, kind of early next year. Yeah, Black, Black Sheep, we should say, uh, uh, would that be a nod towards the, uh, the famous beer? Um, I, I drink a lot of my beer out of a Black Sheep glass. OK, But yeah. I must say, um, the guy who invented Black Sheep beer... I think he was a bit too much of a black sheep. Oh, really? Right. Oh, I'm not a great fan of it. OK, right. Oh, that's interesting. What is your, what's your current favourite tipple? Spitfire. Nice. Good old simple Spitfire. Yeah. Although my friend Holy McGrail will occasionally come down from, um, from the, the wilds outside Sheffield yeah. with, uh, you know, some strange white glassed... Yeah. Um, you know, um, uh, Bergen, Bergen kind of, oh, uh, yeah. you know, th they only speak Walloon in like 23,000 yeah. people m drink this beer up in the, uh, you know, near Luxembourg. Yeah, yeah. Great. Fundamentalist stuff. Fundamentalist Belgian yeah. beer, yeah. yeah. Great. This, I'm afraid, will be the last track we have time for. It's been a real pleasure. Always a, always a joy to have you here on the show, Julian. Well, it's so. a, a shame that we couldn't po point lavishly at each other this No, time. but I'll tell you what, when you're down at the Whitworth, I'm, I'm, I'm around the streets of Manchester quite often these days. When you're down at the Whitworth, I'll come down and we'll have, a, and, you know, we'll have some kind of impromptu art happening. Sounds good to me, mate. What's, uh, what's this track going to be? Well, finish? cleverly, you see, I brought in Holy McGrail, practitioner you of... Did. Yeah? Yeah. He's just got an album... Um, um, which is extremely anarchistic out, um, called Raw Power Suite, where he's taken the tracks of Raw Power right. and done things to them. Fantastic. Uh, he's going to follow it up with um, Master of Reality Suite. Oh, great. Oh, he's very thorough. Yeah. But this... Uh, what, what did we pick? Did we pick... Um, Whatever you like. Oh, Shake Appeal. OK. By Holy McGrail.